Hi guys, it's Ray. I am working on water slide tumblers today. I actually have six to get through. I don't know what order or when they're going to show, but this is actually a green glow 20 ounce skinny sublimation tumbler from Makerflow. This is what I'm going to use for the next one. Next one in my lineup. So I printed this image from Creative Fabrica on a clear water slide. So the green is going to glow through everything that is showing white right now. Um, I'm going to get this soaking. For this one, I used my Hippo Inkjet Clear Water Slide. Uh, links are down in the description for Makerflow, the water slide, uh, any glitter or anything else I use, resins, etc. So... I'm going to let that soak a minute. Um, these are great. The boxes glow. Um, they still come with the care card and everything else. I didn't do anything to this. I'm just going to water slide directly on it other than I wiped it down with some alcohol. Um, the water likes to beat up on these quite a bit. So do be aware of that. Once this is dry and has a thin coat of resin on it, we are going to go ahead and do a drip on the top because it has that fake drip. So I'm going to want to cover that up. This should be ready. Usually this water slide doesn't take long. I just, I go down this rabbit hole with Creative Fabrica where I start just searching for wraps and um, this is why I'd really like to get a sub set up even though I said I wasn't going to because there's so many of them I find that I really like and want to be able to use so eventually that will be coming so we're gonna get this placed started and I'm going to turn this. I don't have this one on an arm. That was stupid. It's the only one I didn't put on an arm when I was prepping for this. I'm going to turn it this way so I can pull this way. I'm going to try and get my top edge pretty well lined up. And I do have a little shedding on the edge. That's just because my blade on my paper trimmer is dull. Still, I know I have not replaced it yet. Other things and expenses keep coming up. And that gets backburnered. But can you see this fake drip? I want to make that a real drip. So, I printed this on my... Eco Tank 2800 with just regular inkjet ink in it, and I spray sealed it three times with my Rust Oleum Clear Gloss Spray, and now I am applying it. I have been really, really happy with that printer so far. It is the basically the bottom of the line um, Eco Tank. It was like 200 bucks at Walmart, you know, plus tax and whatever. But I've been so pleased with it so far, and I have not put a dent in the ink yet. So I do think um, I'm going to get probably the same one. I'm folding this corner. This is going to become a problem. I do think when I'm ready for sublimation, I will probably just get a second one of that because if I can't afford <laughs> a large format printer, um, I might as well just go with a cheaper option. And I've been, like I said, extremely satisfied with how it's working so far. So that is on. I'm actually not concerned about that because the drip is going to cover it. So... I know it's summer, but I'm kind of um, trying to get ahead a little bit on 
spooky season and maybe some of the holiday stuff because the supplies for ornaments and things will be hitting the store soon and I'll have to be switching gears a little bit that direction here and there. Other, other products will start selling. So I have to be mindful of that fact in everything I do. I'm going to grab a dry paper towel. I know in a lot of the comments, you guys always tell me you're scared to try a full wrap. Um, don't be afraid. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to pull it off the tumbler and you're going to have to print another one. Um, just, yeah, don't, don't be afraid of it. It might take you a couple tries to get a, I'm not even going to say flawless because you won't guys know that I don't do flawless. Um, but that is it. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to get a quick coat of epoxy on it. I'm just going to leave the bottom of this one white. Um, I'm okay with the way that bottom came out on this one. At some point, I will try and get this charged up and get a little bit of video in the dark. Um, but for now, it's going to dry. We're going to get a coat of epoxy on it, and I will be back to do the drip. Okay, so here's this one with the coat of epoxy on it and the glow showing. Pretty spectacular glow. There's the bottom. So we're going to take it back in and get the drip done. Okay, so you just saw the glow. Um, now we're going to get ready to do the drip. This is a very dark red, burgundy black faux drip. So, um, I'm going to try to get a dark red burgundy kind of color from my epoxy. I'm going to mix it in one cup and then I'm going to split it into two to let it thicken a bit. So I pulled my wine colored mica powder. I'm going to use some of that. I'm going to go ahead and mix that in first. Um, the liquidy split, this should take not that long to get thick enough to use as a drip. Um, but I will constantly check it because it's really easy to go too far. Um, some people use like puffy paints for their drip. Some people use, um, there's a thick epoxy you can buy for drips now, I believe. Um, some people use a thickener. I don't. I just let it sit until it's thick enough, and sometimes I don't work fast enough and only get halfway around a cup. So, we'll see. But that's a good burgundy already. I'm going to add a couple drops of red alcohol ink. Um, some people use acrylic inks for the paints for this but because of the color I'm going for I don't want to use paint and I kind of like the idea of the epoxy giving it a little bit of a um, sheen or the mica powder if that's what I said um, giving it a little bit of a shimmer and sheen so that's kind of what I'm headed for here and I have slate out. I don't have my black handy. Um, my Let's Resin ink pack right here. Um, this one does have a black black. So I'm going to put two drops of the black in. Actually, I'm going to start with one. Because I can't go backwards if I go too far. <laughs> I used Tim Holtz Crimson for the red. I could have used my whatever the red in this Let's Resin package is, but I didn't think about it. I grabbed what was on the shelf, not what was boxed. But I'll put um, links to the mica and the this alcohol ink pack 
from Let's Resin down below, and I will put a coupon code with those also. Because this was a pretty nice set. It was a 14 pack, and then the Micas came out of this 36 pack. I love their packaging. Um, but yeah, I think one drop of black is plenty. I'm pretty happy with that color. So I'm gonna bring my cup over and kind of compare. I think that's a great match. So what I'm gonna do is, like I said, I'm gonna split this between two cups. Um, that'll give it a better chance of not flash curing when I go to stir it. Sometimes you'll think it's still fluid and as soon as you introduce any kind of air, you'll get like a flash cure and then it'll be worthless. So hopefully I can keep these moving and workable and I will be back when they are set up enough for the drips. Okay, so we're gonna get this finished up. Um, I'm keeping an eye on this resin. I'm gonna, I'm waiting for it to warm up in fact. And I'm going to occasionally just use the stick and pull some up and put it on the edge and see how it's running down the side. Because I got distracted on the batch you watched me mix. This is that set. And it flash cured within like 10 minutes. And then I mixed again. And as soon as I went to move it in the cup, it flash cured. So... Yeah, I'm on take three now. So we're gonna try real hard not to do that again. Uh, there is absolutely nobody home right now other than me and the dog. So hopefully that will work to my advantage this time. And I will hopefully be able to actually get this accomplished. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it and I will be right back. Okay, so this is starting to thicken. I can feel it. I can see it. So I'm going to get started and just hope for the best here. If I have to um, flip it up and down a little bit here and there, I will just do that. But I'm going to go right around the rim. I probably have like twice as much as I need mixed up. But I'm going to tilt it down. I'm going to kind of specifically target a couple of runs. Tilt it right side up if I need to. Let it drip backwards, so to speak. even run a little bit from that edge. I'm okay with letting this run off because it's excess anyways. And I do have a paper on my drying rack ready.
to catch any extra drippage and whatnot. So I do have one of these black drips from the printing that I want gone. And it is starting to thicken up. I can tell the way it's dripping, which is fine at this point. I'm just going to keep layering somewhat. Unless it thickens more. So, I think I'm pretty good. I'm going to kind of run this stick across the bottom and scrape off some of the excess. I really probably only needed maybe 15 mLs, but for something like this, I would rather have too much mixed than not enough. Definitely. So, that's going to be that. I'm going to let this dry. And then I will take it out in the sun and charge it up and we will see what we have. This is still a little bit workable, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag a little more in here and there. All right, I will be back when it's charged. Okay, so here we go. The bottom obviously is just blank. Absolutely love it.